Well, Martian Manhunter needs no introduction. I'm really glad we got a classic version of the character. Now, I do have the other version, but this is the one that a lot of people were hoping to get. And it's finally here. But it's got a plastic cape. It's got to go. So there's a few things that we're going to change. And yes, this is another video on customizing a cape for a figure. But there's a few details in this video that is not in the others. So I do recommend you watch it till the end so that you can see the finished product and you can see a lot of those details that I have not shared with you in prior videos. So let's get started with this project and start on customizing this cape. Let's take a look at the figure itself and plan ahead. Looks like there's a few pieces we can reuse on our actual cape that we're going to be remaking for this figure. The collar, the medallions on the cape, we can certainly reuse that. And if you want to remove the cape and fill in that plug, you can certainly do so. However, you're not going to see it because the cape is actually going to cover it. So personally, I'm not going to worry about it. So let's get started. Just like many of my past videos, I've already done the project. I'm going to show you now what it is I did with this new piece of material so that you understand the process of what it took to make this actual cake. So starting with a piece of cotton, you want to double it up, fold it over, and you want to cut it to the size you need. This is going to be a size that is 9 by 8. Very similar to the cape that you saw earlier for the Ultraman figure. So yes, we are using the same pattern. However, we're going to exaggerate the excess material in the center. Instead of going in one inch, we're going to go in two inches. Now, as I mentioned before, this video will have details that I did not otherwise show you in the other videos. For example, measuring out the lines for making that pocket for that wire. You want a quarter inch in between the two margins that you're going to be drawing in. Now I'm using a permanent marker. You don't have to. You can use something else if you like. A pencil, a, a white grease pencil, a, a crayon, etc. Even soap. Now, you want to have a quarter inch of margin on both sides. That's going to be your pocket for the wire. You want to angle it in one inch above at the very top and coming in from the corner. So it's going to be an angled drawing. As you can see here, now you're going to center up your material in the center. And this is my template for making my curves. Pretty snazzy, huh? Reusing some old plastic from another toy. So it's got a perfect curvature. It's great for the bottom end of the cape. I come in and make the bottom end curved here. And I just extend it by matching in the ends on both left and right. Now I'll be overlapping the lines that I've drawn in from the corners to the top. And that is going to tell me where I'm going to sew my actual stitching. And it's going to give me a nice drawn line to follow. I do this because it's very difficult to do so if you are just winging it. You've got to have a pattern to follow. So at the top, we're going to cut in for the actual collar. And Martian Manhunter has a very small opening at the top because he literally has a collar that folds over. Now we're going to be reusing the collar from the other cape. Now as you can tell here, I've already ironed it out. That's why it's wet from the steam iron. Now at the top, I have my margins that I've uh, drawn in. And using the graph at the top, I'm now going to separate the first layer and I'm going to move it in two inches precisely where that collar starts. So I'm going to go on the left side and now you can see this excess pocket of excess material that we, we can use now to make pleats, etc. I will do the same on the opposite side 
taking it in two inches using the grid at the top to be precise. So now we've got all of this excess material on the center. Now what we've got to do is clip it. I'm going to use these alligator clips. If you've got pins, fine, great, use them, do what you do. If you've got tape, use tape. So I'm going to use these alligator clips, two at the bottom, two at the top. That's only to hold it while I put it under the sewing machine. This is not going to be here permanently. So before you even start to use the sewing machine, make sure you've got the correct color thread. Not only at the top, but also in the bobbin underneath. And these are the settings that I use on my machine to create the threading that I need or the stitching that I want nice and tight, very small, so that it holds well. Time to place it into the sewing machine right underneath the foot. You lift it up. And now that we've got those lines drawn out, now it's going to be easier to follow a straight line. Otherwise, it would be that much more difficult. So these are some of the details you otherwise don't get to see in some of the other videos. And it's best to start off slow and go slow and be accurate instead of being very quick and not being accurate at all. to the end of the pattern you can lock in that stitch by backing up the machine on itself and creating a locking stitch. When turning a corner at your pattern, lift up the foot, turn the material, replace it on top of the next line you are going to follow and continue sewing as you did before, slowly and accurately. So on occasion your machine is going to jam up, either too much thread from the bobbin or from the top feed and it just creates this mess and you can't go any further. Lift up the foot, pull the material out from underneath the foot. If it's lodged in there, move the needle up and down using the right hand knob until it loosens up. And if there's a mess of thread underneath, you can cut it and start over. In this case, we're only going to trim it flush with the surface because it's going to be on the inside. It's never going to be seen. Once you've gone through that, replace it into the machine and continue sewing. Or you can use a scrap piece of material to make sure everything is good. Just in case you didn't know, there is a razor blade at the edge of the machine just above the foot on the left hand side. 
and that is for cutting those threads once you're done sewing that particular project. Once you've got all your stitching done, this is what it should look like. You should have a channel on each side that'll hold a wire and a pocket like this at the top. You'll have to pick which one you want to use to pull the actual cape through and turn it inside out. But in the meantime, you've got all this wonderful excess material now that you can use to create a crease, I should say, a pleat on your cape. And you can go as many as you want, one pleat or two pleats or even three if you need to do so. All depends on the look that you want to have. So to continue with this project, we now have to get rid of all that excess material because that's just going to weigh down the cape and cause problems as we turn it inside out and it's just going to look really bad and it's going to be difficult to iron. So let's get rid of all of these loose threads that are going to be an annoying issue to deal with. Take a pair of scissors or the rotary blade if you prefer to do so and just cut as close to the stitching as possible without cutting into the stitching and removing the excess material. Once we've got that done, we can turn the cape inside out. So this is what your cape should look like if you've cut the excess material off and of course you can take the time to find that pocket for the wire. However, this is not the time to insert the wire. I'm only showing you where the wire is, uh, the pocket that at this point is still visible. It's going to be non-visible as we turn it inside out. So how do you turn it inside out? Well, you pick one of those openings and you cram the material through as best you can. Take your time, it's not a race. However, I will put it on time lapse because it did take me a while. Let's take a look. Now this is our completed cape. It is now ready to have wires added to it, any logos that you want to implement, etc. The best thing is you have hidden stitching and you've got wires that run on the inside. That looks really cool. You can now add any of the pleats that you need to have. And of course, because this is a pattern that fits a multitude of characters, you can implement this with many other colors of fabric for the characters you need. So let's talk about paint and the paint that I use is the Vallejo Premium. Obviously I used the red and I did not airbrush it. I did mask it out but I used dry brush technique and of course I waited between layers for it to fully dry before going in with a second layer. It is a self leveling paint and it gives you a nice smooth finish if you do it correctly. Now this is not the case in which to use a liquid mask. It would have been a total mess because it becomes sticky as it's drying and you saw how it just handled the figure. I would have had liquid mask all over my hands. So masking tape is the way to go in this particular case. 
If you want to remove that bandolier, you have to unglue it from the mid back. And I decided to leave it right where it is because I did not need to do any kind of paint to the actual body. It looks fine just the way it is. Now this is the original cape on the left and I removed those medallions by cutting those straps. I actually didn't have to. I could have just heated them up and removed them. They're just glued in. Now I attached them to my new cape via some straps that I made and I inserted into the actual cape and I glued those with the super glue. Now the actual collar is also from the original cape and then I just wrapped it in fabric and now it can sit over the shoulders and it's got those pegs on those medallions and they fit right into those peg holes where they were originally. Now I am going to use a different glue. It is the fabric tack glue. Why? Because it's easier to remove if I ever have to remove it for any reason and it dries clear and it won't damage my paint. The super glue will dry stiff and it will be very difficult and as I pry it off it will damage whatever paintwork is underneath. So it's best to use a different glue that you can actually heat and remove with uh, a lot easier or better results than having to deal with super glue. Super glue is not the best for everything and of course the Fabri-Tac glue is not the best for everything either. They each have their purpose. Now you see along the back of the neck, I did not plug in that hole. Once again, you're not going to see it. It's going to be covered by the collar and by the cape. Now as you remove the tape from your figure, be very careful not to damage the figure or damage the paintwork you've already done. And as you can tell, we got a stiff piece of tape that is just being stubborn and it's caught under the bandolier. We'll get to that a little bit later. In the meantime, we'll remove the rest of the tape and I actually pushed it underneath the bandolier so that it would not leave any open areas that would be susceptible to becoming painted red. If you do happen to paint your green spots in red, you just take a Q-tip with some acetone or some thinner or alcohol and rub away that excess paint and you should be fine. Once you've got it taken care of, you can clear coat your paintwork if you need to. And many times a paint like this is not going to need it because it is a permanent paint. Unless you want a flat or shiny surface depending on the varnish that you are using. Let's get this thing back together and take a look at the finished product. So here's our Martian Manhunter fully assembled. Let's take a look one more time at that cape and go over some of those details. Remember I said that collar is reusable. It is glued in the back, comes off very easily. And as you can tell, again, I did not plug in that hole in the back. It's going to be hidden by the cape and by the collar. If this were a commission piece, yes, I would plug it in and then color match the green skin. However, at this point, it's not gonna matter. So I really like the brighter tones of red against the green and blue. It really pops out that much better than what came out of package. Because those medallions actually have pegs at the bottom that peg into the blue cape. I didn't know that at the time until I was taking it apart. So I created a blue strap out of the same cotton material and I put a hole punch in it for that peg to go through. I rounded it the edge so that it fits the medallion and then I cut off just enough lead to slide it into the opening of the cape and then cut another hole or half of a hole punch on the cape itself to fit around the medallion underneath without it causing a um, 
excess material that is just not fitting correctly. So now the cape itself has the collar glued to it on the inside, just like it does on the original plastic cape. So the entire collar does not glue around to the cape. It is only glued around in the back. And that's because that collar is flexible and poseable on its own so that the cape is fully mobile and functional on its own. Now I'm going to use a different glue here because if I use the super glue, as I mentioned earlier, it's gonna dry stiff, it's gonna be really difficult to remove and it'll damage anything underneath. But notice how those medallions now sit really flush to the body. This is the Fabri-Tac glue I'm going to use to glue this down. It takes a few hours to dry, so you have to fill in that cavity, add a little bit to the peg underneath that uh, medallion, and then tape it down once you put it in place. Be very careful not to get any glue on the fabric. So this is our finished look after installation. I'm gonna leave you with some video now of the before and after, and I will put a link up in that corner. And just to let you know once more, I do have an Amazon affiliate account, so any other products that I am now using from now on on these videos will be listed in the description for you to purchase. And of course, just remember, I do get a kickback if you do make that purchase. And that is so that you can complete your projects as well. If not, I'm sure you'll do a better job than mine. Now, I also want to introduce somebody to you at the very end of this video, and it's all about dioramas, so stick around to the very end. In the meantime, thank you very much for coming back to the channel. I hope you learned something with this video. I know it's a multitude of making capes videos, but they are all different. Even though it's using the same pattern, you now have a better insight as to how that pattern on that cape was produced. We'll see you next time. So unlike other channels that are in YouTube for artwork, I like to support other artists. And I want to introduce to you Wes Burt. This is his link on Facebook. I'll leave that in the description. He focuses his attention or artwork on dioramas. So if you are in the need of a diorama for your action figure photography, this is the person to talk to. He can certainly help you out. This is what he excels at. So if you don't have the time to produce a diorama, then this is the person to talk to to get it produced for you. Look at the attention, the detail that he's got. It's gonna photograph extremely well. Definitely scales well with a lot of the figures that you may have, six inch or seven inch. And just look at the detail depending on the genre that you are looking for. Here's the Mandalorian, great display for this particular action figure. Even if you don't use it for action figure photography, just for displaying your detail, this looks amazing. So just think about it with a, a light above it, maybe behind it, however you wanna set it up, it's gonna look dynamic on your shelf. Once again, I'll leave the link in the description below and you'll be able to get in touch with West and have one of these displays on your shelf. We'll see you next time.